Now that I have Active Directory installed, I'm going to join my RTS-Core server to the domain. To do that, I'm going to pull up Hyper-V Manager, and in Hyper-V Manager, I'm just going to right-click and connect. I'm going to adjust the uh, resolution to be full screen. Now it just wants my password. Now we have already defined the IP configuration on the core server. I named it what I wanted already. So I'm going to go right back to sconfig. And in sconfig, I can see it's named RTS-Core. Now if you did not rename it, it's going to give you the chance when you join the domain to actually rename it. And we went through number eight earlier, network settings. We made sure the IP address, the subnet mask, the DNS servers were all correct. If any of that is incorrect, especially the DNS server, you will not be able to join the domain. So if this fails, that is the number one thing you would want to troubleshoot. But to join the domain, that is number one. So I'll just type one and hit enter. D for domain or W for workgroup. So we'll just enter D for domain. Name of the domain. Well, my domain is rtsnetworking.com. So I'll enter that. Now it wants the credentials of a user that has the rights to join a computer to the domain. Now that has to be entered domain slash user. So I'm going to enter RTS networking slash administrator. I'll hit enter. Now it prompts me for the password. So I entered my password. But what you notice, nothing happened here. There's no asterisk. This does not even blink. So it looked like it did not accept your password, but it did. A common mistake people make is they'll click in this window, then they'll type their password, and they notice it never moves. So they'll type the password again, thinking it's not working. Then when they hit enter, it says, nope, those are the wrong credentials. So if you have typed in here, then you realized uh, that it may not have been working, so you started typing more. Backspace over everything you may have typed erroneously and just enter the password, or it'll simply reject it, then you can enter the password again. But when I hit enter, it should tell me my credentials are correct and that I have joined the domain. That worked. Now it's asking me if I want to change the computer name. Now I already named this RTS-Core, so I don't need to do that. So I will say no, we don't need to rename and it says I need to restart. So we know that was successful. This is now going to power up and it's going to be joined to the RTS networking domain. Now, since this is a server core, it consumes so few resources, it restarts pretty fast. It's already powered back up. So now I can sign into the RTS networking.com domain. An interesting fact. Notice it says sign into RTS networking. Well, I'm going to start typing administrator in the username. Notice the moment I type administrator, that changes to RTS core to the local machine. If I backspace over the R, notice it changes back to RTS networking. So the way this actually works, when you type in your username, if your username is a local username on the computer, it automatically shifts to sign into the local machine. In my case, RTS Core. If it sees what you typed in is not a local name, then it assumes you're signing in with your domain account. So again, if I enter R, the computer says, oh, I have a local account named administrator. That's probably the one you want. That is not the one I want. So what we'll do, and I just always do this out of habit, regardless of my username. I always type RTS networking slash username. So RTS networking slash administrator. Now that sign in stays as administrator now. And now I'll enter the password for my administrator account. And we are fully authenticated to the domain. Now, one way I know I'm using my domain administrator user account well, it says administrator.rtsnetworking. I can also type, who am I? And it shows me who I logged in as, rtsnetworking slash administrator. So now you have joined this to the domain. It could be managed from the domain itself. I'm going to switch back to my domain controller 
my RTS-DC1, and I'm going to right-click and connect to that. Now, for domain controllers, they do not have local accounts. So there is no point on a domain controller to type RTS networking slash in the front. It's always going to have whatever your domain name is. So if you log into a core server or a client machine, domain name slash just avoids problems on client machines, but not necessarily on my domain controller. Well, on my domain controller, I actually already have Active Directory open. But I'm going to close that so we just have a clean view. So if you're in Server Manager, which will open by default, you can just go to Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. And when you go to this Computers container, you'll see RTS Core is now on the list. So that's the computer we joined to the domain. Now, if I needed to move this to an organizational unit, you could right-click and move and I could move it really anywhere in this structure. So if it's going to go somewhere else, you just move it somewhere else. Or as we saw earlier, you could simply click on this and drag it to another container or an organizational unit. So very easy to move the objects around. Now, if I go back to server manager, this is the interesting part. I have this all servers. Let's say you want your core server to be a domain controller or maybe a file server. You don't want to do that through PowerShell on the local machine. So instead, when I right-click all servers, I can add servers. Now, this is on Active Directory. So I'm going to click Find Now. And this will give you a list of all the servers in your domain. If you're in a large domain with a lot of servers, you could have simply typed the name here. And it will just search for that name. But I'm going to choose RTS Core. And I'm going to click this arrow to add it and OK. Now, RTS Core is in the list. It'll take just a moment to connect to it. Says it's online. Gives me the name and IP address. This is the neat part. Well, now, I can right-click this, and I can go to Add Roles and Features, and I could install any role or feature on this server. So if I go Next, we'll go Next again. Now, I know we've done this once before. You'll see RTS Core. If I wanted this to be a domain controller, I could install Active Directory Domain Services. If you wanted a file server, you'll see a file server as an option. So whatever capability you want, instead of doing it locally through the command prompt or PowerShell, you simply manage it from a remote machine. Every aspect of that server, other than like local troubleshooting, you simply manage through a GUI on a remote machine. So that makes the core server not nearly as daunting. Now, I'm not going to make that a domain controller because that's just repetitive. But if I did make it a domain controller, when I go back to Active Directory Users and Computers, when I right-click my domain, there is an option to change domain controller. So if my RTS core was a domain controller, it would show up in the list. And if you wanted to connect directly to that machine, so if you wanted to maybe create a user, but you wanted it created from that point of view of that domain controller, maybe you do that so you don't have to wait on the object to replicate to that domain controller. You would simply click the core server in this list, and this console here would be remotely connected to that machine. So it can be completely managed through a graphical user interface. Pretty awesome. We truly don't have a need for a core server because everything I can do on the core server, I can also do on the desktop experience server. We mainly want to look at the limitations of the core server and the S config. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the core server. And we are actually going to leave the domain. So I'm going to type S config. And on my core server, it has domain workgroup. Now we just did this, so we'll enter number one again. It says, do you want to join a domain or workgroup? This time I'm going to say W for workgroup. It says the machine is currently joined to a domain. Do you want to remove this computer from the domain now? That's what I intend to do, so yes. Specify an authorized domain slash user. So that's a user account in the domain that has the ability to disjoin this computer. 
So I'll enter RTS networking slash administrator and I'll enter my password for my domain administrator account. Now it says you just need to restart. So I'll say yes to restart and that's it. This computer is no longer a member of the domain and it restarts very fast. But you'll see when I sign in now, it is only giving me the option just to enter my, lo uh, my local credentials. There is no RTS network and domain. Now, if I go back to my uh, domain controller, RTS-DC1, if I go to Tools and Active Directory Users and Computers, notice this RTS core has this down it's kind of very inconspicuous, a little hard to see. There's a black down arrow on it. That means this computer is no longer connected to the domain. Now, the object will stay here. So I could come back and now just delete the object. But this icon means that computer could no longer authenticate to the domain, could not authenticate to domain resources, and denotes that that computer is, from Active Directory's point of view, it's really uh, disabled, disjoined from the domain. But I'm going to actually right click and just delete the account itself because we're not going to use it for anything. So we'll say yes. And that is now truly deleted. When I'm in server manager, if I refresh this server manager view, you'll see RTS core now says access denied, meaning this tool remotely tried to access RTS dash core, even though the computer itself, I mean, it's still on the network, but it's not joined to the domain. So this console can no longer access that, can no longer authenticate to it. So that's why it says access denied. Now it would be great if when you disjoined a domain that it removed all of these types of things for you, but it does not. So here, there is an option to remove server. So I can just click that and it'll just take it out of the list. Otherwise it's gonna stay in the list and just continue to say access denied. But now that RTS networking is gone. Every trace of that is removed from our interface. And this big X and red bar bothers me. So I'll just close that there. So in that demo, we took our RTS core verify the name IP settings, joined it to the domain, verify that it was present in the domain, saw how you could manage it remotely, then we disjoined it from the domain. Now this RTS core, I'm not gonna use this for anything else. We're actually gonna create another virtual machine that we'll use in the class. So another important thing, I'm gonna delete this virtual machine. So I'm just gonna right click and turn off is in the list. Now that it's turned off, I can right click and delete. So that's deleted from my Hyper-V manager. The downside, it's not actually deleting the hard drive. So this still consumes a lot of space on my system. And you'll see down here, this is flashing. Oh, forgive me. I meant to click on the RTS core. I had the window open when it was deleted. So it just starts flashing and says up, the VM's been deleted, just click here to exit and that'll close that window. When we installed our virtual machine, the default path for the virtual hard drive is always your C drive, users, public, public documents, Hyper-V virtual hard disks, and you'll see the RTS core hard drive is still in the list. It is almost six and a half gigs. I don't want that just to consume six and a half gigs of space because I don't intend to use it again. So I'm gonna right click that drive and delete. Now, if you are using VMware, in VMware, when you delete a virtual machine, it'll ask you if you want to delete all the files associated with it, you can say yes, and it even deletes the virtual hard drive. Hyper-V, however, does not do that. So again, that path, always the same path. C, users, public, uh, documents, Hyper-V, virtual hard disks, and you'll see all your virtual hard disks. So now every trace of that machine is actually gone, and we should be left with just one uh, server, our RTS-DC1.